Hello and welcome to Connect FCS Ed Podcast, where we talk about family and consumer sciences education. Each episode is geared to recruit, support, and retain the professional FCS educator. I am your host, Barbara Scully, and I want to help boldly celebrate families and careers with you. Hi, and welcome to Connect FCS Ed. I'm so glad that you're back. Thank you so much for listening, as always. Today's episode, I have the amazing Lauren Quint, who is the, can you say, author or maybe social media guru, but she puts on the CTE Family and Consumer Sciences Teachers Pay Teachers page. She's all over Instagram, Facebook. She's just a wealth of information and resources that she is willingly sharing all of the time. So welcome, Lauren. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So tell me about yourself or tell us, I should say. So currently I am a stay-at-home mom, but I was in the family and consumer sciences classroom for seven years. I ended up there like a lot of teachers nowadays, not by (laughs) studying that in college. I got my teaching certificate in my bachelor's and master's degree in health education. And I was initially looking for, you know, a health teacher position. I had a minor in exercise and sports science. So I was also certified in physical education. What I found after I graduated with my bachelor's and master's degree is that you pretty much are going to be a coach if you're going to be a health teacher and you might have one or two sections of it, which was not what I intended to do. I wanted to be a health teacher because that was my favorite subject in high school. And I love to talk about nutrition and fitness and diseases and, you know, all that that comes with health. But it was, that's not how it works, at least not in Texas. So you're pretty much a coach and you have, you know, a little bit of health in your courses. So I actually left education completely for a while. And I worked for child protective services for five years, which was a great experience and actually ended up being important when I became a family and consumer sciences teacher. So I like reinstated my teaching certificate after that. And I decided to get certified in family and consumer sciences as well. In Texas, once you get your teaching certificate and you have the PPR, which is what we call it in Texas, is professional pedagogy and responsibility for whatever grade levels, I was certified for early childhood through 12th grade. So I could teach any grade level and subject if I had the pass the, cor- the test for that. So I got my family and consumer sciences certification because I was like, you know, this is very closely aligned with health because, you know, you can teach nutrition and then the food or culinary part. I had a lot of experience in partially from health, but also my family owned a restaurant my whole life. And I I worked there as a teenager. And then also the, you know, education and training and human services coursework aligned with my child and protective services history. So I kind of had all these weird connections to family and consumer sciences. So it just worked for me. So I, my first teaching position was in Dallas ISD. And I worked in the culinary arts department, we had an academy of hospitality and tourism. So I was doing the intro courses to culinary arts, and some restaurant management. So I was at in Dallas for two years. And then I spent the other, the last five years of teaching in a suburb outside of Dallas. And I did education and training and human services and hospitality and tourism. And like many of the family and consumer sciences teachers you've spoke to, you know, had many preps. So I, I've probably taught 15 or 20 different courses within family and consumer sciences. So that's, you know, my history with teaching. And then as I became a stay at home mom, I found that when I created these resources and put them up on Teachers Pay Teachers, I was getting good response and, you know, found that that this was becoming, you know, kind of a side hustle uh, (laughs) to my stay at home mom life. 
So it's just grown over the last several years. And, you know, I'm just trying to help the teachers in the classrooms the way that I wanted that help when I first started. No, you hit so many, (laughs) so many uh, key points because one, this podcast was birthed out of me needing the support that I needed when I stepped foot into the classroom. And I still continuously need, I think we are always learning and improving ourselves by listening and watching others. And I, I love that you have such a eclectic background, I guess is the, the correct word to use and how you are, you're just, everything that you do, it, yes, it is touched by family and consumer sciences. Everything, I just, I find it so interesting that our profession of family consumer sciences, we don't dive into a lot of us. I, I can't say all of us because that's, that's just not right. But we found family consumer sciences by happenstance. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't a like, oh, I'm going to go to school to do this because there was no clear cut path for this profession. So it's really interesting in that there are, it seems like almost everybody I have talked to, they just fell into this. It was divine (laughs) falling into this profession, but also at the same time, it's just interesting how we all have a different roadmap that leads us to the same destination. Yeah. And I actually never took a home economics course in middle school or high school. So I didn't even know what the classroom would really look like when I decided to get the certification, but it ended up being a perfect fit. So No, I love that. Well, and that's kind of, that's how it fell into my lap. I, gosh, I I actually applied to be kind of a um, a work-based learning um, teacher. And then, but uh, I didn't get that position, which then I followed up with the CTE director and said, hey, I'm actually in these block courses. Um, So if anything opens up and then immediately I got a response, oh, actually, we have a, we have an opening at our local high school. I'm going to have you apply for it. Okay. So I applied for, I had no idea what it was even about. It's like, oh, family consumer sciences. Okay, great. And then I walk into the classroom and I was like, oh, what am I doing? (laughs) But it was the best thing that has ever happened to me besides, you know, being a mom and raising a family and everything. So how did you, I guess, let's talk about your marketing. I would love to hear about just your marketing journey with your teachers pay teachers. And I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's a lot of people who actually do post a lot of information onto teachers pay teachers because it is a great little side hustle. Yeah. How did you start that journey? Because I love the stuff that you post. Thank you. It started with just posting the things that I would make in my classroom. So when I first started, I couldn't find very much on the internet as far as resources. I was pulling from textbooks and, you know, there was never a textbook that matched what my class was actually teaching. It was all, you know, I'd have to pick and choose and kind of puzzle piece it together. So I started making my own things and then, when I first found Teachers Pay Teachers, I would put those things on there. And they, I mean, looking back, it was really pretty sad looking worksheets. And I wouldn't really add any information to the product description. I wouldn't add a cool cover page. So I would even forget that I had stuff on there because I just, it was just kind of a random thing that I put up and never looked back at. But I decided that I wanted to really pursue this. So I joined some Facebook groups that were related to teachers pay teachers. And I saw people give tips. So you know, they talked about really making a attractive, colorful, eye catching cover page that you would add as your first preview picture on the the product page, and to start an Instagram and a Facebook. And there I mean, there's a lot more outlets that you can 
promote on as well, but those are the ones that I choose to do. And I just started really adding as much detail to the product description and making the cover page as informative as possible, as well as eye-catching, because I wanted people to look at that first image and really understand what the product is. So, you know, you can do a lot of marketing through social media, but Teachers Pay Teachers on its own is where most of my traffic comes from. So Teachers Pay Teachers is well known enough now that people just go straight there and will search. And that's how they find, you know, the products that they end up buying because, you know, they'll just put in a topic and it will take them, you know, to obviously, you know, their search results. So also putting in a great product title is going to help you get customers because you want to provide the information for what the product is, but you also want to help people find it by maybe the, the topic that they're teaching with their lesson, or if they're, sometimes they're just searching for the course. So I will put, for example, if it were something to do with like foodborne illness, I would put, you know, safety and sanitation and culinary arts or hospitality and tourism There's not that much text you can fit in that product title, but you want to fit as much information that will help them find it because that's going to be the first thing that the search results will pull up. So that information is important as well as the product description. I believe it's like the first three lines. You want to put the best information, keywords that will help get your product to the customer that's looking for it. So these are things that I just just from joining those Facebook groups or following other people that are teachers pay teachers sellers. Now there are even accounts that specifically work to help people do better at selling on teachers pay teachers. So there are so many resources out there. Now you just really just have to narrow it down and find the ones that work for you, particularly with family and consumer sciences. I have found that, Identifying what courses work well with the product you're selling help narrow it down for the buyer. It may work totally different for people that are, you know, primary or middle school teachers or even some of the core subjects. They might get their traffic differently based on their uh, product titles. So, but particularly with family and consumer sciences, I found if I put the course title that I'm aiming that product towards in my product description or product title, it has helped tremendously. So I've kind of played with things, you know, is this working well? Change things up. I go through periodically and change the cover page, the product title, the description in my products to kind of keep them fresh. So fresh, but um, also relevant in your product titles. Do you, or maybe even in your um, item, description are you putting in like the standard or anything like that I do I don't always but I try to so in Texas we have the teaks which is our standards and that's what I will I'll copy and paste or link to them that I believe helps also narrow down the the search for people and even if they're doing their own lesson plan they can copy and paste those right into there So I don't always do it, but I should. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's just something that I'm uh, for like my distance learning because I'm a, I'm a completely virtual school going into, well, first trimester and now going into second trimester. If anybody wants to, (laughs) if anybody's into betting, (laughs) I don't think I will be going, returning to school until third trimester, which will be in March. (laughs) Yeah. I've created some pretty cool things and I'm now, I'm always including my, the standard and the learning target here in Washington state. Our frameworks is by our district, but we don't have like what you have in Texas being teaks. We, we just pull for, straight from the, the national organization, which recently just changed. It's now lead FCS. 
So if anybody is listening and you're wondering about your uh, where the, the NASA facts went, it is now under lead FCS. No, uh, well, gosh, there's so much information that you've just shared. So we got cover page. Make sure you have your stuff that is colorful and engaging, topics, taglines, product titles. That's all within marketing. How did uh, within the marketing, did you ever see yourself going into this or did it just kind of fall in or were you kind of scheming and planning ahead? Like, I think we're going to push and go, go towards this a little bit more. Well, it just started happening on its own. I did, did not plan for to be putting this much time into it, which I actually could be putting more time into it to help it grow more. But I saw that things were working in the last, I would say, year and a half. Actually, since I left the classroom, I have been able to, you know, promote it more, promote my products more on social media and just have the time to create several products a week. And I saw that as I was adding more products, that's really when it started to grow. And, you know, I saw the amount of money I was making each month was growing. And I told my husband, look at what's happening. And he, you know, he really encouraged me to put more time into it. And it's become even more than a side hustle now. So I enjoy creating these products. That's one of the, my favorite parts, even when I was in the classroom was creating things. But I obviously, you know, as we know, I didn't have that much time to actually do it. But now that I, I do have a certain set of hours each week that I can, you know, my kids are both in school or preschool that I can get some stuff done. And I just try to really focus on what I see that teachers are needing. So I see in family and consumer science teacher Facebook groups, the several ones that I, I am in, I see what people are talking about trends. And then I try to get ideas on things that I can create to help them. And I've even had multiple times where people have reached out to me and said, you know, I'm looking for this, you know, do you have something like that or will you make it? And I've done that on occasion. And, you know, I want to really balance trying to make this, you know, my job really with also helping teachers and giving them what they need because they need it in the classroom, but I also need their ideas on what, what to make for them and try to find the balance between those two things. But there's a lot more ways that I could expand this and I hope to do so in the future. You know, I could create other products for family consumer sciences teachers that I've been looking into for like on Etsy. You know, there's more ways to expand on social media that could help spread the word. I don't really have the time for that now because I have a three and six year old and can't really get a lot done with them at home. (laughs) But you know, I've seen how it can grow and how it can also benefit teachers. So I'm just trying to keep that up. So, you know, I even wanted to put out there that if people ever need something for their classroom that they don't have the time to make, I am always willing to, to try to help them. And, you know, even the people that have asked me specifically for products, I'll give it to them for free. And then edition also put it up on my teachers pay teachers store. So, you know, it's kind of trying to meet the need for those people, but also, you know, try to make a living for myself. So, you know, I don't want to put it out there that I'm just doing this, like I'm some servant for family and consumer science of teachers, you know, I'm also benefiting from it. It's definitely, there's so many ways out there now that you can expand a business like that. And, and, you just kind of have to focus on making the products. So every week I'll be like, Oh, I didn't make enough social media posts, but really it's creating the products. That's the business. It's, you know, you can post on social media all day, but really the way you get more customers is creating those quality products. Absolutely. I agree a hundred (laughs) percent. That's with any business, (laughs) the products you you create, if it's well done enough, you will have, uh, you will have customers and consumers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. There's 
a lot of great stuff and I'm just kind of rocking my brain here. I guess. So are you a LLC then with your business or is it just independent and a little under under the table? <laughs> well, you know, I'm not an expert on this, so people should always you of know, course. seek out someone's help, which I need to as well. <laughs> I'm not an LLC. I need to look into that because this tax year will be the first year that I've made enough for it to really be, you know, a business. So it's definitely someone, everyone should look into that. And as I hope to, you know, make it grow, you know, I need to do that as well. But teachers pay teachers, unless you make a certain amount, which is a large amount, you don't even get the tax form. They, you just have to print off your sales report from the website. So I don't know, you know, how that impacts it, but my, my husband owns a small business as well. So we really just give all of our, our sales information and our accountant will take care of it. I'm definitely not good at that consumer part of the family consumer sciences, you know, the dollars and cents class or whatever you may call it in each state that that was not my forte. (laughs) The financial literacy part. Yes. Well, I'm curious, what was your favorite class to teach when you were, when you were in the classroom? I had two favorites. Lifetime nutrition and wellness was one of my favorites. I like, you know, talking about the food part, but also nutrition and fitness, which was my health education background. I loved talking to students about like diet trends. And there's a lot of lose weight fast kind of stuff that's out on the internet now. And I really like to dispel some of that to the students. And I would even tell them, you can go home and tell your parents this because they probably don't know it because there's so much false information out there about diets and how to lose weight or the, you know, the appropriate way to do so. So that I always liked. And high school students were always snacking. They always had some for lack of a better word, just crappy food in their bags and just eating it all day long. And I just really wanted to give them information that would help them because they weren't going to be able to eat that way the rest of their life. And then my other favorite class was human growth and development. I loved it because I was becoming a parent as I started teaching that class. So I benefited quite a bit from teaching that. And because I learned so much more, or I reminded myself of how I should be as a parent, in addition to teaching that to the students. So that was really rewarding to teach that class. That's fantastic. Well, as we're starting to wrap up, I'd like to ask you three rapid, quick questions and just off the top of your head. What is your favorite tech tool? Tech tool. Oh, gosh. I would say the first thing that pops in my head is Instagram, which isn't really a tech tool, but that's really where I get most of my information. In the classroom, I really like to use a whole bunch of different things. I loved Google Classroom the last, when I was last in, in the classroom, because it was, I found it the easiest of the learning management systems to use. That was probably not the quick answer you needed, but <laughs> no, no, that's great. How about, are you reading any books? It could be eBooks. It could be just any books. What book are you reading or you last read? The one I'm currently reading is called the happiness project. And it's based on, it's a nonfiction book. And she, a woman, this woman, Gretchen Rubin, I believe is her name is just really researching what people say makes you happy and kind of putting that in place in her life. And each chapter is a different month of trying to apply that. And so I really love the personal development and I'm almost finished with that that book, but I really like to read about how other people improve the way that they live and see if those things will help me as well. So the happiness project by Mm -hmm. who? Gretchen Rubin, R-U-B-I-N. Okay. And how about, do you have 
a leader that you kind of, you look up to? Is there like certain leadership qualities that you look up to when it comes to marketing and family consumer sciences or just kind of, it could be anything, leadership. What do you think of when I say leadership? Well, gosh, I thought of a few different things. Go for it. (laughs) When I was in the classroom, I had, there was an administrator that I really looked up to. He was kind of an example of a go-getter and a no BS, you know, it was down to business, take care of it. But he also walked the walk and didn't just talk the talk. So I really appreciate that because one of the things I did not like about being in the classroom was the pressure from administrators to focus on things that I didn't necessarily think were important and just looked good on the school or district Facebook page. And I thought that we spent a lot of time trying to, you know, please people that didn't need to be pleased. I think we needed to focus more on what the students needed. So I really appreciate when an administrator will do the work themselves and not just try to make things look good. Oh, I love that because just right when you said that, you know, not just talking about it, but they also walk that same line. I have an administrator who I look up to in that same, same way. You know, they're not just about talking and putting on a good face. They walk it and they demonstrate those qualities every single day or every Zoom meeting that I, that we have through administration. So that is great stuff because we're very much alike in the way that we're always wanting to give back. And so by putting that that our happiness project, <laughs> even just highlighting who your the qualities of that administrator, you know, you're giving back and you're giving helpful advice for what we should be looking at when it comes to like our observations or anything like that. So that's powerful. Well, thank you so much for joining. Would you like to just kind of give us your, your Instagram tags, your teacher pay teacher tags, all of that sort of information? Sure. My Instagram is at CTE Family Consumer Sciences. There's no and. That's also my email. So CTE Family Consumer Sciences at Gmail. Like I said before, if anyone needs help creating resources or even if they are starting their own Teachers Pay Teachers page and have questions or, you know, seeking advice, I am happy to help with that. My Facebook is CTE Family and Consumer Sciences. And then my Teachers Pay Teacher store is CTE Family and Consumer Sciences. Oh, very good. Very good. Well, thank you. And we are going to... We will post this information on the Connect FCS Ed page or website. You will have a resource button and where it will be directing to your CTE Teachers Pay Teachers site. And yeah, all the resources that you have available will be able to direct you as our listeners (laughs) do exactly go. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you for joining me today at Connect FCS Ed. In each episode, we boldly celebrate families and careers by providing inspiration, support, and resources for teachers, students, and families. I'm inviting you to join me in the conversation. Let's share your resources and stories. Together, we are better. Thanks again for listening and helping spread the word that family and consumer sciences is today's home economics.